If you've been listening to the show for a while, you might remember my next guest from episode 24, How Not to Lose Your Shit During COVID-19. She gave us some tips that I'm still hearing all of you talk about and personally that I'm still using. And she's back because, well, it ain't over. (laughs) And we got more stuff we got to work through. And we got Thanksgiving coming up. And we got Uncle Bob is going to want to talk about politics at the Thanksgiving dinner table. And we've got lots of parents day drinking. I mean, homeschooling. So, you know, (laughs) we got to work through some issues. So we have licensed mental health counselor here to help us learn how not to worry when the world is ending. Phaedra Smith, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Hey, remember that one time that we did a podcast episode together and we thought COVID was going to last like three months. Wasn't that so cute? Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. And And we're here. And we're here (laughs) and we're still dealing with everything. So I'm always surprised when I hear people tell me that they're fine. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you're fine? Is that, you must not be fine. What pills are you taking? Exactly. So (laughs) can we start there? How do we know if we're not fine? (laughs) Well, number one, you could probably ask the people around you because they probably (laughs) know first. And they're like, no, you're not fine. So, um, but for me, one of the biggest things and kind of learning things for me was learning how to check in with myself. You know, like having that moment that I can just sit and be quiet because oftentimes we keep busy as an avoidance kind of like distraction technique and we don't know we're doing it. But if you sit with yourself long enough and you ask yourself like, you know, how am I doing? Am I, are my shoulders always tense? You know, am I having these constant headaches? Um, And so just checking in with your emotions and your body, like that's like what we call body work. You know, like, am I, am I sitting down and am I, allowing myself to take a couple deep breaths and, and I'm monitoring my thinking. So I think my biggest thing would be, and this is what I tell all my clients is we have to sit down and check in with ourselves. That's so true. And see what physical symptoms, yeah. emotional symptoms, check in with your family members. Yes. I would sometimes get an eye twitch when uh-huh. uh, things would not be going well for yeah. myself, but that I would do exactly what you're talking about, be so busy. There was a time where I even got heart palpitations. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sudafed was part of that to be perfectly transparent, right. <laughs> but but it was the all of those things together. My body was trying to talk to me. So you're mm-hmm. saying definitely check in with the physical symptoms, right. check in with your relationships. Absolutely. What would be some good questions to ask people in our life other than like, I'm good, right? You, you, I'm good, right? Like, <laughs> like well, in a threatening and they're like, yes, you're fine. You're so loving. You're perfect. <laughs> Nothing um, is wrong. Well, I'll, I tell my clients this. I had this one time where I was, uh, I was having like a toddler tantrum, like, and I was like, I was not okay. And for me, I, I finally was just like, I'm, I'm not okay, am I? And my husband was like, no, maybe you should take a nap. And I was like, I think I need to take a nap. But being transparent with your significant other or friends and saying, I don't know, I'm feeling a little off. Like, have you noticed anything with me lately? Like, have I been a little different? And so um, I know with COVID-19 going on, people are being affected in different ways. And my myself, I've, in the last two months, I've lost at least 10 people, <clears throat> which seems absurd. Um, but you, what do you mean you've lost 10 people? Oh, people have died. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was talking to my therapist and she's a uh, Caucasian. She was like, what? She was like, that is not how my world looks at all. And I was like, yes, in the African American like community, people are legit dying. Like they are getting ill from COVID, they're going into the hospital and they are not coming out. Wow. So I have just, I was the, I was one, I was avoiding, I thought I was dealing with it, but I wasn't. And so for me, I started to just feel myself and then I have people in my life. So I'm working out with a personal trainer and he was like, you've been a little kind of checked out. But having people in your life that know you and that know you, your your character and your you know personality to be able to say, you know, are you okay? I think 
it's good for you to ask questions, but also having those people in your circle that are going to be like, are you okay? Because you just don't seem quite like yourself. And that allows you to kind of also, that prompts you to also kind of sit back and say, am I okay? Yeah. But you have to be willing to do that. You have to be willing to sit with yourself and say, am I okay? And then I told myself, no, I need to be back in therapy, mm-hmm. you know? And so I, I don't often share, I'm not always vulnerable with everyone because mm-hmm. that's not safe. Um, but my therapist was like, how are you doing? And I was like, I'm not okay. And I just broke down, but I needed that. And so, um, you know, I think having that, you know, those people in your life that you can, that know you and that, you know, will help you check in is also helpful. Whether it's professional, like you you said, your therapist mm-hmm. or just people in your life that you maybe given permission ahead of time. Absolutely. Hey, if I ever act off, right. I, would you please be a part of my team? I promise I won't I will not bite, bite your you. head off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And then, you know, you have to keep your end of the, the deal with right, that, which is right. kind of hard sometimes. Yeah. But I love that you ask open-ended questions like, mm-hmm. um, what was it you said? Um, uh, it wasn't, have I acted, been acting different lately? Um, How did you word that? I, I don't know, but maybe it was. It was good. Like, well, good thing this is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> we can play it back. And How it have out. I been lately? Have you noticed anything different about me, you know, and I, so even when he said that, that was like the prompt, it prompted me to go a little bit further, you know, and then, because sometimes some people, even though they love you, they won't necessarily say anything, Mm -hmm. you know, but giving people permission. Yeah. And sometimes they, you know, maybe they're also dealing with their own set of things as we all are Mm -hmm. that we don't think to, you know, just like you said, your therapist is white. And so she is a woman yes so she didn't realize the impact that right. the african-american community is in feeling with right. COVID 19 among a million other things right. right so that your your burdens are not her burdens and right. it's all it's like we gotta kind of set down our own burdens just momentarily right. um en- long enough to ask other people hey right. are you okay right. like what's what does your world look like you know? Oh, that's a good one. I like that. What I like is, that too. That just came. That's um, good. Yeah. Well, we got it recorded. <laughs> so it, it's documented. <laughs> what does your world look like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So fi- figuring out if you're okay and checking in with yourself. When you check in with yourself, what does that look like for you being a busy woman? Because mm-hmm. you've got kids, you've got a professional career, right. you've got a lot of you're working out, which kudos, because I don't yeah. think a lot of people were making time for that. You're, yeah. I know from talking with you off mic, you're taking care of yourself personally. Right. So what are your systems or rituals to daily check in with yourself and see how things are going? Well, the blessing for me is that I am a therapist. So pretty much all my, like, my sessions are like, all right, let's take a moment and breathe. You know, and so like I'm doing it for them, but I'm also for me so I can just get myself together. Um, But in those moments, I get to be mindful, you know, but even outside of that, I was, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier and like yesterday I listened to, I watched church online and then afterwards I just like, I was sitting in my office and I just started painting, you know, but that was me checking in with myself and allowing whatever is in me to like sort of come out, you know, artistically. And so... I think for for people, it might look different, you know, depending on what your passion is or what your your skill set is. But I think it starts with just sitting down and allowing quiet to kind of settle in, you know, and allowing for things to come up that need to come up, you know. Um, And again, like I say, a lot of times we just we try to avoid that because of fear. We don't know what will come up or we, you know, we discount emotions. So um, but making time for quiet yeah I think fear is a big one why people don't check in fear that you can't come back absolutely you know fear that if you let it let it go for a minute or acknowledge it that it will take over you absolutely and then you won't be able to do all the things that you have to do right which you know in a day which Mm -hmm. are a lot and especially 
you know, in Pensacola too, we've got this extra stress that sounds so hilarious on the outside, but <laughs> I'm talking about the, the bridge that was ruined by the Skanska barges, y'all. But it, it really has added so much stress to our local community mm-hmm. as well, because 15 minute commutes have become our commutes right. on top of all of the other things going right. on. So it, it can be hard to check in. So I think figuring out what part of your day that is the most practical for you mm-hmm. that you can create the most space would be key. You know, for right. some people it might have to be evening, mm-hmm. which might mean not watching your favorite show right away. Right. Which right. as funny as, I mean, that's, there's all these little things that we don't realize are prohibitive. Yes. Yeah. My, um, I remember my pastor was saying for every yes for something, that's a no for something else. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think you have to decide to say yes to mental health. You know, and so sometimes there's a time and a season for, you know, watching Netflix and completely checking out to the world. And but there's also a time and a season for turning off Netflix and and being into yourself and saying, you know, what what do I need? Because mm-hmm. maybe I'm not OK or maybe I am OK, but I, I don't know that until I check in with myself. You know, exactly. Or maybe the solution to being better mm-hmm. is more easily accessible than you realize Yes. Avoidance for me personally makes uh, mountains out of molehills. You know, mm-hmm. it makes it like, oh, this is so complicated. It's going to take so much time. And when I start to have that thought process, I know I'm procrastinating, right. which is just this weird stress response that's literally the most unhelpful thing right. that my body could right. do. Like, oh, let's just put off everything. Yeah. Yeah. And let you think about everything at once, but nothing at all. <laughs> so helpful. Thanks, brain. Love you. Mean it. Not really. I love (laughs) it. Saying yes to mental health. So what are the consequences of not saying yes to mental health? I think it's exactly what you mentioned. It's like a total shutdown. (laughs) It really is. It's it's, you know, binging on Netflix because now you can't do anything else. You know, Um, I I always say your body is going to take what it needs eventually. It's going to somehow and um, and so I think giving yourself those moments to sort of breathe. Um, and one of the uh, things I tell my clients is I say, if you think about your day um, like a balloon, so you wake up and it's already probably getting full because maybe the alarm clock rubbed you the wrong way, you know, and then it just continually, you know, expands. Um, And what we need to do is create little holes in our day where we can like poke the balloon so we can kind of release that um, so that when we get home with our families, we aren't like explosive, you know. So um, I think taking moments when you're in the car to do some breathing or to like not put on the radio because, you know, any no sometimes the brain doesn't know the difference between like good noise and bad noise you know and when i say noise i mean stressors you know so again the that quiet time can allow you to kind of like re- release the air you know from the balloon so that you aren't explosive and so that you can think clearly and you can have empathy and you have room for other people and their worlds and their stressors you know so so the consequence would be the opposite of all of those things right. that you just said, right. pushing the people out of your life absolutely, because you didn't have room for them because you're, I love the balloon analogy. Yeah. Your analogy is so good. <laughs> this is why people, even though we recorded, you know, our first episode yeah. months ago, they yeah. still like, you know, the, the thing, and they'll mention something yeah. about the episode. And I'm like, yes, I know. I, I literally, the energy was the one that I oh, remember yeah. the most is. Uh, stress and depression and anxiety, their energy, you have to give them respect and let them go somewhere. Right. And that's when I started running. But then it turned into a thousand degrees and I quit that immediately because yes. I was like, this is un- this is gross. <laughs> I'm gross. I don't want to do this. But um, anyway, negative consequences, um, pushing people out of your life. So there's definitely relationship consequences. You mentioned exploding um, when you come home because you kind of saved your saved it all up Right. Until the end. What about um, physically consequences um, in your body of not saying yes to mental health? I think it's the same thing. Um, I think you are you're you know, that 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 energy, you know, is it can be it can be toxic. You know, you're you're not letting it go. We're not meant to just be pent up all the time. And so it just your body will physically respond to that. Maybe it looks like headaches. Maybe it looks like body aches, you know, tension. Um, And so 
I do think that a, a lot of illnesses um, and things like that, you know, they start from just possibly stress, you know, like just prolonged stress. Like that's not, you know, that's not how our bodies were made, you know. So I think if you look at mental health and you see it in a different light, that it also affects your physical health, then you make it more of a priority for you, you know, so. If you respect it as you would, your arm got cut off. Correct. Then you will treat it with a little bit more urgency. Correct. That's so a really I, good I've told my clients before, um, because they'll go through this trauma or something, and they'll still be like, well, I feel like I should be able to, you know. Um, and I say, well, if you broke your arm, would you still go out and play baseball, or would you kind of sit down until it healed? And they were like, well, I'd sit down, you know. Or I'd go to the doctor and I'd say, well, why is your mental health any different? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're not in the season where you're capable of doing certain things, but yet we try to force it on ourselves because we have these expectations that were, you know, passed down through generations or, you know, from our parents or whatever. Um, but sometimes we're not there. We're in triage. We're in, you know, <laughs> we have the cast on, you know, so... Um, allow, allowing yourself to be where you are is so important, you know, be where you are, be where you are. That's so good and so true. And that's a great way to check in. Right. That's why I think having those rituals mm -hmm. daily is built in right. and accepted and maybe even a part of the family ritual mm -hmm. um, can almost give us permission as uh, a, adults right. to take care of what would, you know, if take care of our mental health as we would a broken arm. Correct. Like, uh, you know, nope, mom's got a cast on her foot. She cannot bring the groceries uh, in. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Nope. This is mom's meditation hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't lock on the door unless you're burning, barfing, or bleeding. Correct. Those were the three B's my mom always used to say. So. <laughs> It just rolls off the tongue. Well, that's clearly because I've been brainwashed <laughs> by it. So, yeah. <laughs> what are some rituals that you've helped some of your clients create or that you yourself have built into the fabric of your daily life? For me, I am, I, I, first of all, I think that there, you reach points in your life where there's high stress like Hurricane Sally and it throws you off. So um, I'm getting back to my rituals um, so for me personally, um, re uh, my relationship with God is a big thing. So I have tried to now put back into my life time in the mornings, you know, uh, for, you know, just reading my Bible and getting on my treadmill, listening to music. Um, but also I think, so that's one scheduling in time. And so we talked about this last time being intentional. Like, that's just, that's what it is. It's like, you just have to. Like, so um, scheduling a lunch break. So for those of you that are entrepreneurs and like, you just like, you go, 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 go. Like setting a time to say, no, this is my, this is my time for, to eat, you know, or this is a time I'm going to cut, cut off to spend with my family. And then this is what our time is going to look like. So Things like that. So uh, scheduling things in. Um, also, I think when we talk about rituals, like um, some of the things I've talked to my clients about is creating like like a box, creating like a prayer box or a a box where you know the things that are out of our control, like the bridge or you know the stress the many stressors in our life that we have no control over but they are affecting us so how are you going to be intentional about letting those things go throughout your day what is that going to look like for you is it that you're going to create a container just like in your head you know like what does that container look like you know is it is it gray you know what does it look like on the inside and so when those thoughts come up of things that you can't control that would normally put stress on your body and give you anxiety or kind of fill you with rage or whatever, taking that and putting that in the container, you know, either to deal with later with a professional or to deal with when you're having your quiet time, you know, um, or if it's a, a literal box or a prayer box, you know, writing those things down and putting them in the box and, you know, saying that I'm not going to pick those things up and, unless I'm praying over them, you know, so 
I do think small things like that matter. They, you, our, our bodies react to us allowing it to, to have that release. How are you allowing yourself to have that release? Is, is it coming out in the form of you yelling at your children and your spouse? Like, how is it? It's coming out. You just might not know, you know? So by giving your body yes. an act, an activity, yes. a task, mm-hmm. it can, you can use that to almost as like a vehicle for the emotions to go, albeit temporarily right. in some cases. So you could have a physical box where you mm-hmm. wrote down things that bugged you or worried you or made right. you angry and just dump them in the box. Yeah. Do you feel like, uh, as I'm saying this out yes. loud, I am hearing yes. voices in my head a little bit of someone going, oh, I'll just use my phone. <laughs> I don't know whose voice that is, but it's somebody's voice. I love it. So what's the difference between actually <laughs> writing that down and just using your phone? Is it is it is it different? To me, it is. I mean... I don't, my phone comes with me. Like I need Mm. to like physically put it somewhere. Maybe we need to put our phone in the box. Maybe the phone needs to go in there. It's the, it's the act of letting go. So it's like, because that's one of the big problems. We don't know how to let things, I don't know how to let things go sometimes, you know? Um, And so it's physically saying, okay, I let that go. But then how do you like manifest it in the real world? You know? And so, I think doing that is so helpful. Just that act of doing it, um, it, it is like allowing yourself to see yourself release it, mm. you know. And it's, so it's sort of like those, at times you'll see therapists have people write things on paper and then burn them, mm-hmm. burn it and stuff. It's, it's sort of like that. Like That's like every church retreat ever. Absolutely. <laughs> it's it's got to be implemented. It has to it's be. It's not is let it go even, unless it's burned. Is it youth group if we didn't write things down <laughs> and burn them? I mean, no, no it it's not. It doesn't count. <laughs> Mm-mm. So um, I, I I am not faithful in doing that all the time, but that is my plan to do, to make a prayer box. Someone told me like they, a good name would be to let the, the let shit go box. Oh, I like it. So for someone that doesn't want to make a prayer box, the let shit go box <laughs> might be. I love that. So awesome. Much. You know, <laughs> so um I, I, I just think it's a, it's a cool thing to do. And yeah. you get to teach your kids to do it, too. If you have kids and you want to do that, teach them to let it go. Like, we all need to have that um, that skill set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I love that it could even be something you did. You know, when you talk about creating a new habit, um, mm-hmm. people often talk about attaching that new habit to an anchor habit. Yes. So meaning, like, you probably brush your teeth every day, mm-hmm. ho- hopefully. So, and and you want to start taking vitamins. Right. So you put the vitamins next to the toothbrush because the toothbrush is the anchor habit. And then yes. you create that new habit. So if when you come home, if you have dinner together, not the best example, most families don't have dinner together, right. but let, that's the only, that's the best thing I got right okay. now. So we'll let's go just it. go with it. So you have dinner together. The box could be a pre-dinner ritual I love and it. then you and then everyone comes to the table this obviously is an example from 1950s because <laughs> no one comes to, that's how I grew up and my husband and I we we sometimes eat at the table together yeah, too so yeah. I just I can't think of a better example <laughs> but hopefully there's a practical application for a right. listener that it could be a family affair and I think that's key to in creating habits in my own life mm-hmm. is involving other people because yes. like Working out at home, yeah, that is such a cute idea. Right. It's adorable, but I cannot do it. I cannot work out at home in front right. of a video. I have to have an appointment with somebody. Oh, yeah. Even if it's like a virtual thing where yeah. they're expecting me to log on and they can see my face. Yeah. Like I need that. So by involving the other others with you, mm-hmm. if you have a family, if you live alone, you right. could make it like a, a friend yes. and say, you know, at this time we're we're going to do this online yoga class yes. and put stuff in the let shit go box. Yes. Yeah. We might set it on fire. I don't know. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Was there, I see you have the, the body keeps score book. Is there anything about the consequences of not letting things go from that book that you wanted to share? I love this book, by the way. Um, but do you mind if I read a little bit? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so... Okay, so it starts by saying, in other words, if an organism is stuck in survival mode, its energies are focused on fighting off unseen enemies. 
which leaves no room for nurture, care, and love. For us humans, it means that as long as the mind is defending itself against invisible assaults, our closest bonds are threatened, along with our ability to imagine, plan, play, learn, and pay attention to other people's needs. And so I thought that was so, like, profound. And we talk about the effects of not letting go and not, you know, checking in. It's It goes far beyond what we, you know, can think of. It's not just the physical body, but it affects your creativity. Mm-hmm. You know, it affects, it affects the ability for you to play and for, the, and for you to learn. Because it does rob you of, you know, your ability to really think straight all the time, you know. So, so true. if my energy is focused on, my body's energy is focused on trying to survive all the time and trying to keep all the stuff, um, you know, make things happen that I have no control over, then I'm really like saying no to all these other things. Mm-hmm. And so. By default. By default. I, I can only do so much at one time, you know. I agree. I personally have felt it like a wet blanket Mm -hmm. over my mind and my body and it just you feel like I feel like a zombie right you know and and that's the one end and then the other end is what you just touched on when your body's in that fight or flight mode correct because of the stress response and everything seems urgent and important all at once Mm -hmm. and then but your mind can't settle on one thought long enough to solve it yes and so really not addressing that would create a devastating consequence with someone's job and unless they have a very like um you know factory type right. position where they could check out right but I, I think for most people it does require them to be checked in oh yeah so uh that would create a lot of problems yeah. with you not maybe missing out on a promotion or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think sometimes we have to have these even financial incentives yeah. to take care of ourselves because we think that it will blow over when really it doesn't. The body just swallows it and it manifests in other things. So, but it doesn't, I think what's tricky about it too is it's not like, oh, I need to get my hair cut. I'm going to make a quick appointment. I'm going to get my hair cut. Done. Right. Did it. Cross it off my list. Right. It's like layers Mm -hmm. of the box idea, Mm -hmm. the painting idea. Mm -hmm. You, you mentioned you were painted the other day, the, yoga the whatever it is just trying different things and peeling back those layers how do you know when you're when you are okay we started this conversation with how you know when you're not okay how do you know if you are good um i think that it goes back to checking in with yourself Hmm. You know, I think it goes back to um, even like keeping a journal, you know, to know like I might not be like the best that I've ever been. But, man, I'm so much better than I was two weeks ago, Um, because a lot of times we because we don't kind of like keep track of that stuff. We're very hard on ourselves. But to be able to see your progress, that is what's going to be important. So that journal might look like checking in with a friend again, you know. That journal might look like checking in with your therapist. So it doesn't have to be a physical journal? N- not in, no. Because I, I, I tell my friends sometimes, I'm like, sometimes a friend is like the best kind of journal. Because I can remind you, girl, you have come far. You know? Because like, <laughs> you talk back. To the journal is <laughs> Yes. 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 Yeah, you have come a long yeah. ways. You know? So, um but just having having some kind of person or a thing that you can you can rely on and you can have that you know something that you can go back and look at and say you know how am i doing but i think first you have to be willing to do that you have to be willing to be vulnerable mm-hmm. first with yourself and then also with your your safe people you know so have safe people have you have to have safe people collect some yeah find find a community Mm-hmm. I think that's important. And that's a whole nother like podcast episode, how we find those safe people, what that looks like. But, but I do think that that is important. We're not meant to live life solo. No, we're not. And even in quarantine, we got to figure it out. We have to figure it which out. Which is why I'm so grateful for people like you to come and share your wisdom. And, you know, for those that don't know, she has an amazing podcast that is all about these subjects that you unpack with your partner in crime. And I I love how y'all 
the the dynamic between the two of yeah. you and yeah. sometimes you interview somebody sometimes it's just the two of you yeah. i just love it thank you so um as we wrap up are there any final thoughts that you want to share wisdom wise um one of the things i wrote down is i think we have to practice letting go daily multiple times a day so that might look like every time i get in my car or every time I um, a commercial break comes on, I'm going to stretch or I'm going to take a deep breath. When I pass on, somebody mentioned, I don't know who mentioned this to me, but they said whenever they pass um, under a door frame, they stop and they take a deep breath. Oh, Isn't that cool? I love that. But to create these things that allow, that gives you, oh, I pass under a door frame. You know, it just triggers for you to remember to do something like that. So. Um, whatever you have to do to survive within reason, you know, do it. Because at the end of the day, your body's going to thank you. Your friends are going to thank you. Your family's going to thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I really think that it's important. Practicing self-care is, I think that is how we survive as the world is ending. You know, like that's how we have to uh, remember to take, we just have to take care of ourselves because it is important and it's imperative to not just you and your body, but also also to those around you. Right, because you can't control what's going on out there, right. but the worry and the fear and um, that you can, I'll say mitigate. I think that, that yes. Yeah, yes. I don't know if we can control all of that because right. those are helpful signals that our body gives us to right. tell us something is you it requ something requires action there's an action item yeah. here it's like you know the little things that yes. pop up on your computer ding yes. that's yes. like your what worry is for your body it's just yes. we can't have that all the time because it wears our system down correct so to I, you know you're so good i mean are you a therapist in my heart okay. <laughs> Yes. No, girl, I just got a lot of issues. <laughs> so. Well, that was that was so well worded. Yes. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, I appreciate you. Tell us where uh, people can follow you, and um, especially if people want to schedule a telehealth session with you, yes. how can they do that? Um, you can go to my website. That is www.greenhousecounselingfl, as in Florida, um, dot com. Um, or you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram. It's just Greenhouse Counseling. Um, so yeah, and I, I, I am taking clients. And can you take clients that they have to live in the state of Florida? Or how does that work? M majority of my clients are in the state of Florida. I would have to um, check with your state to see um, if they allow allow okay. that. But as a therapist in Florida, our board allows us to see other people. It just depends on their state that they're in. Okay, so but it varies have, state to state. Yes, but I do have clients all the way in Miami and just like all over the state. So I am taking clients and hopefully starting um, some groups also. Yes. I think that'll be, I think that's going to be fun. Because then we can find community. Absolutely. Collect some resources, yes. have some new thoughts. Yes. Well, thank you so much, my friend. That thank was you for awesome. Having me. That was great.